Hi, my name is Futaf Ma'ani and I'm also an instructor at ESB Matt. And today I'd like to speak about how our education team uses the Smithsonian Learning Lab. So we use it as a resource to find artworks or activities for lessons, as a repository for the work we've done so that it can be used as a resource for our team and for any other arts and cultural educators, and as a virtual presentation space for digital exhibits. I'll show you how we do this through two examples, the State Creative Program and East Austin Murals. Our centre offers summer camps each year, but in 2020, due to the pandemic, the whole Museums and Cultural Programs Division of Austin Parks and Recreation collaborated to deliver an online summer program called Stay Creative. For the program, each member of our team was tasked with creating five lesson plans with instructional videos, plus collaborating on an additional video and activity. It was a quick turnaround, so I used the Smithsonian Learning Lab to search for activities for inspiration. I found Philippa Rappaport's collection of Vejigantes from Puerto Rico, and it includes a mask activity, along with photos of masks and costumes. Using these and resources from a couple of other collections, I now had examples of Bejigante masks with some contextual information and an activity I could adapt for the program. With a solid base and a bit more research, planning and experimentation, I could create my activity. So at the end of Stay Creative, we wanted to make the lessons into resources for others, so we made Learning Lab collections as repositories. Adapting the lesson plan for a broader audience of parents and educators, and in this case, I copied across items from other collections, such as the Bejigante resources I had found earlier. We also added additional resources, such as photos, links to our web pages on the subject matter, and YouTube videos for more in depth perspectives, especially from the people whose culture the lessons highlight. So, even though these lessons were focused on first and fifth grade, the material can be easily adapted for older students or even adults. We also create digital exhibits, and the ESOS and Murals Learning Lab collection is one that we created and are now in the process of fleshing out as a repository of murals in Austin, with particular focus on East Austin, which for those who are not aware, was the part of the city Black and Latinx people were forced to live during formal segregation. The collection features many works, some of which are still there, and some of which have been removed. Most of the murals are a reflection of the communities that they were created in, and removal of many of these art pieces has been part of processes of gentrification and forced community change. The collection includes photos, but also news articles and videos that discuss these issues through the artworks. Murals themselves are very significant for Mexican-American communities, as they are at the intersection of rich traditions of Mexican, Chicanx, and urban muralisms. To finish, I'd like to show how we use collections like Estos and Murals, which is not lesson-based, to create lessons or curricula. To create a high school lesson plan, I want to focus on community change, so I selected La Loteria as the basis. The original 1989 mural was painted over without consideration for local feelings, only to be re-established in an updated form by the original artist due to community activism. Although it was a privately owned wall, it was emblematic of broader processes of new residents changing East Austin's character and making it too expensive for long-time residents, rather than connecting with and integrating into the existing community. So it's a great example of the issues I'm interested in exploring with students. It uses the Mexican game of Loteria, which is a type of pictogram bingo, to depict symbols of Mexican-American culture, history, and people. Symbols that the artist intended the audience to be able to easily relate to. These include reimaginings of traditional Loteria cards like El Soldado, which in the mural depicts a soldier on the U.S.-Mexican border. New cards such as this turtle that honors the Austin Chicanx artist and activist Raul Salinas, the hoe and flag of the United Farm Workers that pays homage to Dolores Huerta and Cesar Chavez, and even Chavo, the beloved Mexican TV character. Consulting the relevant takes, I see that 9B looks at constructs of citizenship and community, which I think applies nicely to this case example. We start our lessons with a warm-up, so I include a free online app that we can use to play Loteria with students. For the main activity, students will look at images of La Loteria from the Austin Murals collection and discuss their impressions. They can then read and discuss an article about the context of the repainting of La Loteria and be led through some of the symbolism used by the artists. From there, they will be invited to create their own cards. They could be recreations or reimaginings of the cards in the mural or original work. So I hope you all will look at our collections and use the resources and adapt our lessons or create your own. Using the example, you could create a collection for La Loteria, copying across the resources from our collection, adding a link to the online app, and adding other useful resources and sending the link to the collection to your students. In any case, I hope this was useful to you, and we welcome any feedback that could make our collections more useful for educators like yourself. Thank you.